Okay, here's the machining operation on the end of the part. And I want to pay, pay particular attention to the order of, of operations because there's a lot of holes being drilled in this end of the part and it's necessary to have certain holes drilled before other holes. And this is what I'm trying to show here. You'll see in a, in a little bit on these little inserted video of the um, simulation off the Esprit cam software to show that because you can't really see when I'm uh, um, got all this coolant and everything going and so I put these little inserted video clips of the off the um, simulation this right here is just a half inch um, bull nosed end mill and it's roughing out these notches in the part to where these, these um, certain cavities start. The first notch it was doing I think is just a flat for, I, I don't know what it does, it's just a flat maybe to hold some kind of a wrench on the part possibly. This flat here is, is a, a flat in the area of a, a cavity that goes down into the hole that goes down the, the big hole that goes down the part. And this just shows the half inch end mill roughing it off. And then I come back with another half inch end mill to uh, finish it with. I'm trying as best I can not to run coolant in certain areas so you can kind of see what's happening. But in, in uh, certain parts of this I have to on the drills and, and things. And also this end mill is taking pretty deep depth of cut and if I don't run coolant the shavings build up. So there's little um, spot faces, you know, I guess you might, or notches or spot faces where certain fittings go into the side of this part. Practically every tool in this setup I had to retouch off because I hadn't had them in already in the um, tool changer magazine. So you'll see me doing a lot of that. So here's just the finishing tool of those notches that the um, bullnose end mill was roughing out. In the titanium material it's kind of better to run a bullnose end mill to rough with because you lose the points of a regular end mill pretty quickly on you know, the sharp corners. So that's just the counterbores and notches, which you'll see later is where these fittings go into the part. Here I'm changing, of course, to the next tool that I need. I have to touch it off. I have to do this to practically every tool in this video. There's a little spot faces where there's um, dr gun drill holes and then a um, Leco plug hole right here. I'm showing with my finger just to start the the drills. You've got to have a flat surface so that they don't walk around on that radius of the OD. That's that flat. I'm not sure what that does, but it's appears maybe they may put some kind of wrench thing on there maybe I'm, I'm not sure or maybe they put markings on there I'm not sure exactly so here's the drill I'm gonna drill a that's an inch and a quarter um, I think it's an ISCAR drill I'm gonna drill a hole to intersect the inch and a half hole inside the part I'm, the reason I'm using this inch and a quarter drill is I, I'm going to use it later on down the part and it's the size I need down there. So after this drill I have to actually rough this hole out to an inch and a half in diameter with a, um, I think it's a three quarter inch five flute end mill I'm putting in here now. And the reason it's in that kind of collet chuck, I don't normally hold an end mill in this kind of a collet chuck but I need the clearance on the collet nut you'll see in a second here otherwise it would hit the flats or the, or the sides I should say of the of the notch with the nut of the collet chuck so I needed that smaller diameter 
Normally I like to hold a tool like that in an end mill chuck. So there's the inch and a half hole that intersects the inch and a half drilled hole down the length of the part, which you may have seen in the previous video. So it's inch and a half plus or minus five, so that's good. And I'm going to come in here with a, um, got to remember now. Oh, this cutter to cut this undercut below where that where that flat in the side of the part is there's an undercut that in the real part not in my setup part because it doesn't have the hole in there it actually intersects the a hole where they're going to weld a plug into it so this just because you can't see anything i showed this uh video simulation here of what's actually happening in there That of course is sped way up, so it takes quite a bit longer to do those little uh, passes. It's only stepping down a few thousandths of an inch when it's milling those angles, so it gets sort of a decent finish on there. And it sort of gives you an idea of what, what that tool was doing there. On that side where I'm just touching my finger, there's a hole that intersects the side of this in the wall and then they're going to weld a little plug so that it blocks off the hole coming out the end of the part but it goes up into some stuff further down the part i'm not sure what all that does but it, maybe they have wiring or something that goes through there i'm not sure it's this spot drill for the um various holes they're coming in the side there and then I, I come in with a smaller spot drill because I can't use that larger one to get into those, you see the small spot faces on the side of the part here. That's what this one's for. It's a quarter inch by 90 degree spot drill. Here again I gotta touch it off. So those three holes are where the um, Leco plugs get pressed in to seal them off. Well, you'll see the later in the video the tool that makes those holes. There's a 3 16 diameter drill to drill a start hole for the 3 16 gun drill being used here. in a shrink holder in a sealed collet chuck. Like I say, it's just drilling about three-eighths of an inch in so that gun drill has a start point. Got to change this bigger tool to the smaller gun drill. There's the 3 16 gun drill I'm using. You're going to see in the next clip, and the reason I put these little inserts in here is it's important to have the order of operations correct when you're drilling these holes that intersect other holes, because you don't want to drill a hole and then drill another drill behind it that is only halfway on the side of the hole. So some of these holes are being drilled and some are being left to be drilled later after I drill the, the larger drill. You can see that one's intersecting a hole in the side that's already in the part. But you don't want to drill a hole. Well, the basic thing is to drill the long holes before the short holes or, or any hole that intersects the side. It's all right if, if you're going all the way through sort of bridging but across the hole that that seems to be all right for the drill but to drill a drill into a hole that's only got one side of the hole on the side of the hole is very hard on the drill and causes problems because it's a kind of an unbalanced cut on the drill and it and it can chip the drill particularly in this these kind of materials like titanium see this is the larger drill that I'm talking about that I have to drill which is the 
tap drill actually for the 5 16 24 thread I'm going to mill later and you'll see here it drills in there but there's these other the gun drill intersects that hole but I want to drill this hole first and then you're going to see me come back with the gun drill those two holes are just to rough out what gets done later and then now I'm going to come in there with a a little bit smaller drill because there's two of the holes have a a quarter inch ream in the bottom so that's what this one is this is a I believe that's a a D size I don't know it's a 246 thousand so I think that's a is that a D size drill I can't remember letter drill and that's just to rough out the bottom of these two pockets or are these will be ports actually and there's a quarter inch reamer unfortunately I think I didn't take video of the reamer doing its thing a little later and now we're going to drill those gun drills to intersect the sides of the tap drill for the 5 16 see but that one's going all the way through and that seems to be alright if you can drill all the way through but you wouldn't want to drill the larger drill to intersect that if you could help it and this one's just going to go into the side of the cavity you can see there or the tap drill hole and that's what I was kind of trying to show with those little inserts so here's a, a form tool that I was using for the top of two of the ports take this particular form in the top of them had a little trouble with this tool it might just be the aluminum material with chatter you'll see in a second here and you can hear it if you listen carefully I don't know if you can see that but that chattered big time uh, I'm gonna have to try something a little different here Close the steady rest. I re ran the tool without adjusting the Z, and I've also increased the RPM, double the RPM actually, and it looks better. Now I'm going to set it down a little bit in Z, see if I can kill that chatter a little bit in the, the bottom. If that works, then I'll try it in the titanium, but I'll set it up the first time and, and uh, fiddle with the, the speed if necessary with the steady rest closed and I've got a port tool to run in here as well a, an SAE port tool in this hole I think I'll run these two tools with the steady rest closed on the part it doesn't seem to be necessary for the rest of these operations but maybe for these port tools thinking that might be all right in the titanium it doesn't look too bad on this one so here's the SAE port tool after that form tool and I've been using this same tool for a lot of parts and it, and it, I guess it, it gets a little dull and it runs a little better actually. And that's a standard, I, I ground that on my grinder but that's a standard SAE form. And then to come in with a 5 16 24, um, first I'm going to open the steady rest. I don't like to keep it closed on the part if I can help it because it just, it gets shavings under there and it dents the part up. 
So here's the 516's 24 thread. the simulation over there just showing it's kind of hard to see with all that coolant what's actually happening so there's actually um, three holes that get milled with this thread those two that I had the trouble with the port tool chattering and then the, the SAE port they're all the same size thread I'm not sure why they're using different ports there but they are. This is a 516 24 um, thread gauge. If you're going to mill a thread, of course you need a thread gauge to check it with. There's a tap drill for a quarter 28 thread that's going to be milled in here. I already had that tool in the magazine. Didn't have to set that one up. All these others are kind of left over from the previous job I did. That's the 28-pitch um, thread mill for the quarter 28 thread. Gonna touch it off here again. This is the first time our, the, the the 516's 24 thread mill I already had in the machine and I already had it set appropriate to mill the right size but every time the first time you run a thread mill you got to kind of check it that was a little bit tight so I'm going to adjust the offset and then rerun it a little bit hard to get these graphics off the simulation to sync exactly with the machine in a video like this but you get the idea what's happening there it's not perfectly synced but kind of let you see what's actually happening I believe the next tool is a, um, I gotta check the thread, check the final hole just to make sure, is one of the SAE, or no, this is the Leco plug tool, I believe, yeah, the roughing one. And these, uh, these little holes, they press, these Leco, they call them Leco plugs, they press them in there and they seal off the hole. It's it's kind of like welding it up, I guess, but it, but they can pull those things out if they had to for some reason and, and then put an oversized one in. So they, I guess they use these for that reason. And here's the finish. Leco plug tool. These have to be held to kind of a close tolerance and fit, so that's why I run a roughing one and then a finish one. End of there. I gotta set this um, quarter inch end mill to rough out this other. This, this other hole is, I think, uh, a hole that they. That, there's in the real part there's a if you look at the graphics I've kind of given the real you can see some of the real part and the holes there that are going lengthwise and I think these are, are the purpose of these is to put plugs in there to seal those holes off so they're 
sealed off from where they come out the face of the part. So these also have a particular shape and a close tolerance on the diameter. That's just the rough out. I'm just checking it to make sure it's not too big. Because this form tool coming up now is I ground on my grinder to... Well, I've got to put it in there yet. That's not the tool. This one is. That forms the shape of this particular hole. Like I say, I think it's. I think they're going to press a pin or a something in there, a plug in there of some sort, and it seals those holes off. This tool has a special 45 degree on the tip of it and everything just for this hole. And it also has to have a good finish on there. And you can see, kind of see in the in the graphic simulation, the holes that are running down the length of the part. And I think that's what these are going to seal off when they press these plugs in there. I believe. So that's the final tool in this setup. So there's that undercut area, and there's some of the ports. that's going to be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and um, if this kind of content interests you please subscribe and thanks for watching.